my hair looks so cute. Thank you. I have a haircut on the 19th, and until then, I mean, it's I told just going to be this way. <laughs> but it looks it's nice. It's hard to prepare. It is. Mr. Downing. Yeah. Down. Yeah. But he's, he's a beautician. No, he's not. He's an art. They're really small. It's but called a cosmetologist. They're Western. Oh. My mother it happens to be one. I didn't know that. She used to have. 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 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sierra Vista City Council meeting for June 13th, uh, 2019. So I call the meeting to order. Uh, may we have a roll call, please, Ms. Marsh? Mayor Rick Mueller? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Rachel Gray? Present. Council Member William Benning? Present. Council Member Gwen Calhoun? Present. Council Member Sarah Pacheco? Present. Council Member Carolyn Umphrey? Present. Council Member Christine Wolf? Present. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mrs. Marsh. Uh, tonight we'll start our meeting with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight the invocation will be led by Becky Priest of the Hope and Healing Christian Church. Please rise. Let us pray. Father, we ask for your assistance during this city council meeting. According to your word, we pray blessings over all who are in authority, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and reverence. We ask for wisdom, and according to your word, uh, your, you will give wisdom to us liberally and without reproach. We ask for understanding hearts to use with this wisdom so the right decisions are made for the good of the people that this council serves. We ask you to bless and protect all of our law enforcement officers and first responders. Please help them to know how much we appreciate all of them. We thank you, Lord, that when we pray your will, the answer is always yes. So we believe the wisdom, understanding, blessings, and protection requested have been received. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mayor Pro Tem Gray. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you please be seated thank you pastor <coughs> and uh, just a reminder since we did the just did the pledge flag day is tomorrow so everybody remember that okay uh acceptance of the agenda item number one mr benning mr may i move that the agenda for the regular city council meeting of june 13 2019 be approved second it's been moved and second any uh, additions, amendments, corrections? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. We'll now move on to awards and presentations, and Chief Thrasher will present the Police Department Employees of the Year. Chief? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, it's my pleasure to present to you uh, the Police Department Employees of the Year. Uh, we are actually going to start off uh, with our Citizens of the Year. Uh, that were recognized by the police department this year, uh, Jane Strain and Kathy Bonacore. So Jane, if you can come forward up there with the mayor. <laughs> Jane and Kathy were recognized as the SVPD Citizens of the Year for their unwavering support of the Animal Care and Control Center as part of the Friends of the Service to Animal Shelter. Their dedication to the animals and financial support of community outreach events has allowed SVPD to better serve the community. In addition, their fundraising effort to purchase and donate to the city an animal emergency evacuation tra trailer is on the verge of completion. And once it's delivered, you guys will see that coming before you to accept that uh, with the city. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Jane and Kathy. And before the chief goes on, are you done with her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have to stay up for a picture. <laughs> but I, wanted, I just want to say, I know the I'm speaking for the council and community, we really appreciate 
everything your organization has done for the animals for the years, and you're an excellent example of community involvement, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. There until everybody gets up there. You got to stay up for the final picture. We had a class picture at the end. <laughs> uh, the next will be our volunteer of the year alternate, uh, Larue Troyer. Uh, LaRue has been a volunteer in the department's record section since 2012. As described by the record supervisor, quote, one of the really special things about LaRue is her reliability and willingness to learn and to do whatever needs to be done. There has never been anything to my knowledge that she was not willing to learn and do, and her attitude is always positive. She always has a smile. And our volunteer of the year, Verna Pelt. Vern provided an unprecedented service to the citizens of Sierra Vista by volunteering to manage the department's sex offender program, as well as other duties as assigned. The sex offender program is we're required to monitor the sex offenders that live within Sierra Vista, and uh, Vern does an exceptional job at that. The success of this program is a direct result of Vern's commitment and numerous hours dedicated to the program. Vern's also, Vern's also volunteers for various other duties, including fingerprinting, and most recently taking our department photographs. Uh, I actually refer to Vern as our volunteer chief. So <laughs> if you need anything from the chief, go to, go to Vern. <laughs> our supervisor of the year was Sergeant Armin Lewis. Patrol Sergeant Lewis embraces the high expectations and tremendous responsibilities that come with being a supervisor. He leads by example, embraces self-improvement, and prioritizes developing future leaders within the service to police department. These attributes have set him apart as a supervisor in the department, and as a result, he'll be promoted to lieutenant on June 24th, in just a week and a half. Congratulations. Our civilian of the year alternate was our patrol bureau assistant, Holly Sheriff. Holly's primary duties include serving as the department's hearing officer for impounded vehicles and administrator of the department's tow truck rotation policy. So if uh, you don't know what that means, whenever we uh, make an arrest for a DUI or suspend a license, the vehicle gets impounded and they have to come in and meet with her to get their vehicle back. Uh, what's exceptional about that is I have never taken a complaint about her in the department. So it, despite you know us holding onto a vehicle, someone's vehicle, she does an exceptional job with that. She is the epitome of the department's service with honor philosophy and has become the department's go-to person for many other department matters as well. She's very, very skilled. Our civilian of the year uh, was not able to make it tonight. That was records clerk David Carnes. Uh, uh, records clerk and department chaplain David Carnes is a steadfast worker dedicated to fulfilling his role as a records clerk within the department and sets a positive role model for others to follow. In addition, David carries a greater mission of service by providing emotional support to others in his role as a police chaplain and a peer support member. Uh, we have two officer of the year alternates. Uh, the first, I did see him come in, uh, John Andela. Officer Aldella is consistently one of the most dependable officers in the department and always willing to step up and mentor younger officers. During the year, he was awarded the department's critical incident award for his handling of a situation where multiple dogs were mauling a young boy and was also recognized for reviving a heroin addict that had overdosed. Uh, he has also recently just been assigned uh, to detectives as a result of his work. Good job. Our second officer, your alternate, I did not see her come in, and she, was, she obviously was not able to make it, was uh, Officer Nastasia Paris. Officer Paris is an incredibly productive worker that works dil diligently to set the bar high for the entire department. Officer Paris was recognized on multiple occasions for her kindness and empathy, all while also leading the department in handling calls for service, traffic stops, and other proactive activity. She's a leader by example, and every department member looks forward to working with her. And our Officer of the Year, Officer Annalise Roselli. <laughs> officer Annalise Roselli and her canine partner, partner Izzy, which is out in the air-conditioned car at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> consistently demonstrated dedication to excellence by setting the example in proactive patrols, professional demeanor, teamwork, and thorough investigations. Officer Roselli led the department in several, several areas of proactive activity and providing high-quality law enforcement services to, to the community. Officer Roselli deployed her canine Izzy 86 times, which resulted in the arrest of 43 individuals for drug-related crimes. 
In addition, she led the department in DUI enforcement, making 41 DUI arrests and assisting others as a drug recognition expert. Uh, she not only trains and deploys Izzy, which takes her off the road one day a week for that training, she serves as a defensive tactics instructor, drug recognition expert, and a DUI instructor. And she was our 2018 Officer of the Year. Congratulations. move on to the city manager's report. Mr. Petucci. Thank you, Mayor Mueller, members of the council. Our next regularly scheduled uh, work session is scheduled for June 25th, 3 p.m., and that will be held in the conference room. A few projects tonight. Uh, we have our uh, public works uh, maintenance yard, the old yard over, over on uh, north. Uh, and that uh, demolition uh, project will be published in the Herald uh, on June 19th, 20th, 21st, and 23rd, and will be posted on the city's website as well. A pre-bid conference is scheduled for June 26th, and we hope to get bids in uh, by uh, July 10th and have those open at noon on that day. So that'll go a long way towards cleaning up uh, our part of the west side there. The City Hall remodel project was published in the Herald uh, between May 22nd and 26th. Pre-bid meeting was, uh, was held on June 4th. There we have three uh, vendors uh, that are interested and bids will be accepted and opened on June 19th. And finally, uh, the engineering statement of qualifications for <coughs> phase one of the North Garden Avenue and Fry Boulevard improvements project, the RCDBG, or, 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 or our MPO project, I, excuse me. Uh, two respondents uh, were interviewed yesterday by staff, the firms of SCE Engineering and EPS Group, and uh, we're, those are currently under evaluation, and we hope to have somebody on board pretty soon. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you, Mayor Mueller. Mr. Mr. Petuchik, did I hear you say the North Garden project was an MPO project? The funding was through the MPO. Well, the funding is through the MPO, okay, because it's a city project. City project funded by Got the MPO, it. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Have we heard, um, Mr. Petustic, have we heard any more about the library uh, coffee shop? Uh, no update on that yet, okay. Ms. Calhoun, but uh, we are working on that. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Petustic on this report? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Mr. Petustic. I will now move on to the consent agenda. Ms. Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I Excuse me. <laughs> That's okay. I move that the consent agenda consisting of the City Council regular meeting min minutes of May 23rd, 2019, the special meeting minutes of June 3rd, 2019, resolution 2019-043, appointment of Chris Ireland and Alfred Spurgeon to the service to airport commission, said terms to expire December 31st, 2020, and resolution 2019-044, approval of the standard video services application and affidavit be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions for discussion? Mr. Mayor, I, yes, need, to, I need to um, what, not vote on the June 3rd meeting, special meeting. Okay. So if you need to if you need to do that, then you, need, you, need, you, need, you can either abstain from the from this uh, item, or you can make a motion that would uh, change the agenda so that we would have we would vote on June the June three meeting separately. I'd like to do it separately. So you're gonna make a you're gonna make a motion to that effect. Make a motion that we pull the special meeting minutes from the. June 3rd. June, the June 3rd special meeting from the... Uh, and we'll address that as a separate item. Yes, and address it as a okay. separate item. Mm -hmm. so Consent agenda, that's what I was trying to think of. Any, do we have a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of using it, having it as a separate item? Opposed? Is it unanimous? Sorry. Okay, it is unanimous. Okay, so now we go back to the original motion as amended which would be the approval of the May 20, 23rd meetings 
the appointment of uh, on item 2.3, the appointments, as well as the standard video services on 2.4. Everybody understand that? Yes. Sir. Okay, any further discussion on those items? No. Yes, sir. So I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Now may I have a motion for uh, approval of the special meeting on June 3rd? I move that uh, we approve the special meeting minutes of June 3rd, 2019. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? And one abstention. So uh, six, and, six and one abstention. Thank you. Okay. Now uh, that's passed, so we go on to the public hearing item. Uh, the first public hearing item, uh, uh, Ms. Pacheco, item number three, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I move that resolution 2019-045, an application for a new license, series, series 12, limited, limited liability type of ownership for Amy S. Nations on behalf of, is it Joko? NGW dash LLC DBA uh, Native Grill and Wings located at 3950 Martin Luther King Parkway, Sierra Vista, Arizona be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Marsh, may we have a staff report, please? Yes. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, the city received an application for a new Series 12 license for the Native Grill and Wings restaurant. The license is non transferable for on-sale retail privileges. The police department has performed a background investigation and has given its approval for this license. A notice of the public hearing was posted on the premises, and if approved tonight, it will be forwarded to the State Department of Liquor Licenses and Control for Thank you, Ms. Marsh. Before we ask Ms. Marsh any questions, this is a public hearing item. I did not receive any, any request to address this on this item. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address this on this item. Seeing none, I'll close the, close this portion of the meeting. Uh, council, any discussion, questions? Yes, sir. No. Okay. So we'll call call the item. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Marsh. We now move on to item number four. Uh, Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that resolution 2019-046, approval of the 2019-2024 consolidated plan and 2019 annual action plan for community development block grant funding be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. McLaughlin, may we have the staff report, please? Absolutely. Mr. Mayor, members of council, staff is seeking your authorization to proceed with the submission of the proposed five-year consolidated plan and 2019 annual action plan. Uh, to HUD, which are required documents to receive community development block grant funding. Uh, the consolidated plan describes how the city plans to invest uh, its resources in meeting ongoing housing, community development, and uh, public service needs over the next five years. Year during the five year uh, planning cycle, the city council will develop and vote on an annual action plan that lists the specific projects or programs to be carried out. Uh, during the program year based on each year's apportionment. Uh, our amount for the 2019 program year is $271,141, which is 4% higher than last year's amount. Uh, the plan allocates uh, $175,000 towards improving Soldier Creek Park, uh, $25,000 towards sprucing up uh, James Landwehr Plaza, uh, $46,174 towards accessibility improvements in the target areas. Uh, additionally, uh, $15,000 in funding is allocated towards youth scholarships at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, with the remaining $10,000 to cover administrative costs. Uh, no changes are proposed to the document that you considered at your meeting on May 9th. Uh, we've received two comments from the public during the 30-day review period. Uh, one individual expressed a desire to see uh, increased funding for um, demolition projects targeting the removal of slum and blight. Another individual is interested in seeing the city fund accessibility upgrades and improvements across city facilities. And I believe we previously spoke about uh, doing a comprehensive audit uh, over the next year to identify and prioritize uh, 
you know, ADA upgrades that we can make for future funding consideration. And with that, I'll answer any questions you may have. Questions for Mr. McLaughlin? I have, I have a couple of comments and questions. On your ADA upgrades or updates, whatever, for city facilities, you should already have a document that was done by the state years ago that it went through pretty pretty directly as to what we needed to do. I think we've done most of that, but that needs to be reviewed first. And the other the other question uh, dealing with uh, the ADA is what has been new since that since that review was done. What new legislation? What new requirements have been done uh, for ADA specific? usage and that needs to be reviewed too and added to the documents so when you do that that needs to be done uh, the other the other question I can ask you and I, I should have I apologize for not preparing you for this but the public may be interested in knowing how we're doing on the FY 18 with FY 17 pending projects that we have with CDGB yes sir give us a little background or a little okay update. well as you're aware uh, one of the um, 17 slash 18 projects uh, there were two um, program year funding uh, uh, allocated towards uh, improving Timothy Lane Park and that project is underway uh, right now they're uh, working on the earthwork to create the stormwater basin uh, and that will be followed by construction of the uh, multi-use pass uh, on the property that will eventually connect to Gulf Links uh, as a drive uh, to provide pedestrian accessibility. Uh, and then the Frytown site improvements, um, I was updated and told that it's the next project in the queue, and that involved curb gutter and sidewalk along a section of Fifth Street North, as well as an alleyway drainage improvement. Um, between First and Second Streets, it was a north-south alleyway. And uh, that's in engineering and is uh, the, the contract documents are being worked on. Um, the demolition project, it was announced that uh, the solicitation is on the street and we hope to receive bids over the next month. And I believe that is all so we in terms have, of pending projects. We still have pending, well, that, that's the point I wanted to make to the public. We still have pending projects. And my concern with pending projects always is when they go into the next federal fiscal year, um, we need to make sure that we're, we're accounting for it so the money doesn't get pulled. Correct. And that's, that's really my concern. Okay. And I think we're okay, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other any other questions or discussion on this item? S seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. We now new move to uh, new business, and uh, item number five, Mrs. Calhoun. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that resolution 2019-047 adopting the fiscal year 2020 classification and compensation plan be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mrs. F Ms. Fleming, may we have the staff report, please? Yes, Mayor and Council, thank you. So before you tonight, for your consideration, I have resolution to approve the annual class and comp plan that we present to the council each year during the budget process. <coughs> um, this year, the class and comp plan includes the 2% step increase for employees that was implemented during the new class and comp a few years back. It also includes a 2% market shift. All of the funding has been included in the budget that you're going to be presented to that, and I will um, answer any questions that you have. Questions or discussion with Ms. Ms. Fleming? No questions. I know we went we went over this a couple of times in the in the past uh, months, in quite some detail. So, appreciate your work, Ms. Fleming. We'll all call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, Ms. Fleming. Thank you. We're now moving to item number six, Mr. Benning. Mr. Mayor, I move the resolution 2019-048 approval of the fiscal year 2019-2020 tentative budget be approved. It's been moved and seconded. Mrs. Yarborough, may we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Your adoption of this resolution would cap the fiscal year 1920 budget 
at $90,368,774. Your final budget amount could be less than or equal to that, but it could not exceed that amount. The changes in the tentative budget from your budget book provided to you a week before Memorial Day are as follows. There is $30,000 included for the consolidated court agreement extension for the next year. The EMS fire substation was uh, left out of the capital improvement plan, so that was added back in. There's a $45,000 increase to the city manager full-time salaries line. The CECOM changes were the result of a decision to make the CECOM budget more transparent to the community, and so those changes were included. There's a change to the capital improvement fund of $50,000 to address an issue with the visitor center at the OICC. And the HER fund was increased due to the state legislature deciding to give $197,802 to each community this year to do additional streets projects. If you adopt the tentative budget tonight on July 11th, your next action would be approving the final budget and starting the public hearing on the property tax. And July 25th would be the resolution to then adopt the property tax levy of which there are no proposed increases. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Yarbrough. Questions from Mrs. Yarbrough? Uh, Ms. May, I just want to comment. We talked about 50000 for the visitor center, and uh, I was able to go to the OYCC and took a tour of where that's going to be. And uh, the concept is nice, so I could see, but I could also see where that money would be spent. So I know some of us had questions, and that was answered, so I appreciate that from the staff. Okay, before we go any further, I forgot to mention we have one member of the public that would like to address us on this on this item, and even though it's not a public hearing item, it's, it's all, we've obviously allowed public to address us on this with the same rules, so I'd like to ask Mr. Crosby to come forward to address us. And again, Tom, you know the, you know the rules, five minutes, and, uh, and uh, if, you, if you're not complete, if you go over five minutes, I'll ask you to conclude your remarks. I won't. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a pleasure to see familiar faces here. Tom Crosby, 3807 Fiscus Loop, the very heart of downtown suburbia in Sierra Vista. Once upon a time, there was a chief tax collector that will be famous for eternity, and he said, if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. But personally, I'd be happy if you just give the taxpayers back equal money that four people in this room defrauded them of. You should definitely try to give back that millions of dollars from the SSVEC and Southwest gas taxes back to the taxpayers. An excuse like, we met the minimum legal requirement, or we really needed the revenue, or I really wanted to get the full-time job is probably not going to cut it. A former councilman asked me, when are we going to hear the end of this? And I replied, never. There's things that last forever. Even an atheist would recognize the value to society of transcendent laws like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. We'll close the meeting. Any other further discussion on this item? No. Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We now move on to item number seven, Mayor Pro Tem Gray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Benning, for fixing my microphone. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that Resolution 2019-049, an extension of the moratorium on development fees, be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin, may we have the staff report, please? Uh, as you're aware, the uh, two-year moratorium on impact fees is scheduled to sunset later this month. Uh, the proposed one-year extension would provide uh, the consultant that's uh, currently engaged to update the city's uh, impact fee uh, schedule, uh, sufficient time to complete his work and uh, uh, implement the new fee schedule. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Questions for Mr. McLaughlin? Yes, ma'am. This is being proposed for a year? An One entire... year. Is it possible it could be done for less time? 
Uh, I'm told that the consultant's uh, schedule will extend a year, including the required public hearings. Yeah, and that, and that if you, if you, I just want to add that if you remember, once they get their work done, we have to go through a series of public hearings. So it kind of will line up with the next fiscal year and et cetera. And I think that's what's what's been planned, Mr. Petucci. Council Mayor Mueller, um, Council Member Calhoun, uh, that is the plan. Uh, we're currently in the study. We don't anticipate that the study will be completed until shortly after the calendar year and then there's a very extensive process we have to go through in terms of meetings and and uh, public hearings before uh, it's implemented so we feel july 1st is pr of next fiscal year is probably the earliest that we can implement thank you mm -hmm. okay any other questions or discussion all right seeing none i'll call for the question all those in favor opposed it's unanimous thank you very much we now go on to uh, item number eight, Mr. Benning. Mr. May, I move the resolution 2019-050, uh, intergovernmental agreement with Cochise College and the Cochise County Sheriff's Office for the Southeast Arizona Law Enforcement Training Academy be approved. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Chief Thrasher, may we have a staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, this uh, intergovernmental agreement uh, between Cochise College and the Cochise County Sheriff's Office is to operate uh, the uh, Arizona Post Academy down at Cochise College in Douglas. Uh, this is very similar to the agreement that we signed before for us to provide one officer as a recruit training officer for the next two classes. Uh, the main difference you will see between this, this agreement and the last one was that the college will now reimburse the city up to $10,000 for overtime for the recruit training officer and provide three training slot, three free training slots for the academy, uh, as a result of us providing that uh, that training officer. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the chief? Yes, ma'am. I just want to. I wanted to be able to say good job, Chief Thrasher, for those excellent additions. But as he told us on Tuesday, that was um, Dr. Rotweiler who agreed. Um, wanted to do those so um, I just want to say thank you to Cochise College and Dr. Rottweiler and I'm sure had he not Chief Thrasher would have negotiated those <laughs> in. Go. Thank you Mr. Mayor. I'm curious about the number of total slots we have or there are. Now. So uh, they can handle up to 20 uh, positions uh, 15 to 20 is about what they could they can handle. Uh, we currently have five reserve slots. We should have at least three in that academy class. This next one coming up. So uh, we're still uh, we still have some some applicants that are going through the process. We may still get to that five, but uh, we'll at least have add three probably in that academy class. And then the rest of the state fills up the rest of the slots. The rest of the, the priorities within county, uh, and then and then the rest of the state. Uh, but yes, there is uh, a lot more interest coming in. I know the Tone Odom. Uh, nation is is sending some recruits down there now and and uh, some of the adjacent counties great great thank you so then it looks like there'll be 20 do you think? probably 15 mm -hmm. uh, because when it really comes right up to the end uh, typically what ends up happening is somebody doesn't make it through the background process and those kind of things but uh, I, I would imagine about 15 that's great thank you just one more last question and this is significantly less expensive than other states uh, absolutely yeah that was and that was so people know the genesis of establishing this, establishing this academy with the Cochise College was, in fact, that prices were going up elsewhere, and it, uh, they really couldn't be justified in, in the opinion of the folks that were going through the academy. So, And I'm sure we can do it better, right, Chief? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So any other further questions or discussions? Yes, sir. I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now go on to item number nine, Mrs. Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that resolution 2019-051, appointment of the Cochise County Justice of the Peace, Precinct 5, as City Magistrate be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Yarbrough, may we have the staff report, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Back in 1990, the Mayor and Council entered into the first intergovernment with Cochise County services and has renewed the agreement since that time. As part of that agreement and by service to city code, the mayor and council are required to appoint the justice of the peace for precinct five as service to city magistrate. Further, Arizona revised statute 22-402 states that a city may enter into an IGA to provide services of a municipal court 
And if it chooses to do so, it must be with either justice of the peace in whose jurisdiction the city is located or another city within the same county as city magistrate. And so with this resolution, council appoints the justice of the peace for precinct five as the city magistrate. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Yarborough. We do have a member of the public that wishes to address us on this item. Again, Mr. Crosby, I'd ask you to come forward. And again, same rules as before. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I try to think that uh, I never say anything that isn't worthwhile and I won't go over the time. In my opinion, Mr. Call is not honest and should not hold a position of trust. When I advised him in November 2012 of election ballot discrepancies involving county personnel under his uh, supervision, he took no action to remediate those election issues, just like the city, by the way. From a 2011 interview with Pat Call quoting, okay, we need a water district here with the authority to own and operate water infrastructure. That's all it was ever meant to be, okay? But the HB 2300 legislation and current ARS 45-544, capital B, 8, small b. Listen carefully if you're not used to legalese. The transportation of groundwater in which groundwater is transported away from the district and away from the upper San Pedro groundwater basin an expansion of that transfer by the same person or its successor for the same person for the same purpose are valid if that transfer was occurring before September 1st 1993 so that law is still on the books now i'm going to review it again number 1 operate water infrastructure that's all it was ever meant to be okay versus Groundwater is transported away from the district and away from the upper San Pedro groundwater basin. The 1994 estimate of the value of the water in the aquifer that we are on top of was estimated between 3.5 and $8 billion. And I wonder if that value has doubled by now since 1994. Regrettably, Fallacious Central Arizona Project and Bureau of Reclamation Ideas also caught the attention of your mayor and manager. But to give Pat Call more authority, more money, and less oversight is a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. We'll now move on to the discussion of the council. Any, any comments, questions on this item for the council? Yes, ma'am. Well, we'll just start with. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I actually, this is one of the few times I actually wrote down my thoughts <laughs> so I can be concise. So forgive me if this sounds uh, like I've written it out because I totally did. <laughs> so let's move on from there. Um, so on this particular item, it is my feeling that the County Board of Supervisors has put us as a city Sierra Vista Council in a very untenable position. We are being told that we have to approve an appointment that was done without regard to an appropriate process. In government, the process by which people come to a decision is important, and I know that this council very much values that process and how it goes. That's why we adhere to so rigidly to open meeting laws. That is why we record and videotape all of our council sessions. It's why we find it so important to continue to engage our community and make sure that we do so in a better way. It is to make sure that the process itself is open and that it is clear. When the process is ignored or circumvented, the resulting decision becomes unethical. An action or process can be unethical even if it is legal. Legality and ethics are two different items and while they should be one and the same, they are not always. The process to appoint in this particular situation was ethical, unethical. I do understand that there will likely be fiscal ramifications to my vote should it carry, but I cannot and I will not vote or affirm an unethical process. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gallagher. Yes, thank you. Um, I couldn't have said it better myself, so I won't repeat what uh, Christine said. I do agree with her as far as doing the right thing by what I believe is right. 
I did hear the discussion and the work session and understand the various points that were made. I appreciate what you had to say, Mayor, about um, separating the two. I, I find that really difficult to do, and I've had some time to think about it. Um, I have another question also, or a question. Uh, something that you read, uh, Victoria, um, and I don't know where it was in your statement, but it had to do with another city. And I, I, that wasn't clear to me. You were, it was around the magistrate. Would you? Oh. Mr. Oh. Uh, Mayor Mueller, Council Member Calhoun, uh, essentially, in order to operate a magistrate court uh, by state statute, uh, there are three alternatives uh, for us. One is to uh, enter into agreement for consolidated court services with our Justice of the Peace precinct. Uh, second would be to stand up a separate magistrate court with another community uh, in the county. And the third would be to stand up our own magistrate court. Mm -hmm. So those are the three options that we have for uh, providing magistrate court services to the community. So then my next question is, is there another city in the area that has a magistrate court of its own? Or does everybody consolidate with the, the one that we do? City. Mayor, members of council, uh, Wachuca City has its own magistrate. Um, Tombstone has its own magistrate. Um, Douglas, I believe, has its own magistrate, but I'd have to double check on that. But those are the only three that come to mind. Benson. Oh, Benson. Benson has a magistrate as well. I'm, I'm being told from the audience. So they're not part know. of this consolidated court system that we're part of currently. Uh, I, I know Wichita City and Tombstone are not. I'm not sure about the other communities. I, I think they, they do have agreements with the county. Well, the, the, the thing is, it's not, it's not just, right now, it's not necessarily one system. No. Each, each uh, municipality has an agreement with their magistrate court through the county, is my yeah. understanding. So it hasn't, there isn't a consolidated county system. That's one of the issues. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. That's one of the issues. Okay. Everybody's got a separate way of doing Common okay. agreement. Everybody has to have a magistrate. Okay. It's just a matter of how it's it, I is see. It either done through the county and the JP or is it their okay. own magistrate? Mm. Okay. I think I need a little more clarification then. When you say a magistrate, is it a person or a court? So everyone has their own person. A magistrate, yes. Mm. And it's not necessary. Well, let's say, for example, Tim Dickerson was a magistrate. Mm -hmm. So he was the magistrate. Each, each okay. JP had their own agreements. OK. I, where I'm going with this is wondering if we were to choose not to accept the person that the county is putting forward. If we were to choose, could we use another person to be our magistrate? You'd have to set up a court. Yeah. Without setting up a court and all of that, just use another person. Well, the way the resolution is worded, it's through... It, it, the council is actually appointing the justice of the peace precinct five and not a named individual uh, to be that. In this case, though, uh, <coughs> Mr. Call has been appointed by the board of supervisors to be the uh, justice of the peace. So uh, by agreement, we have uh, always uh, since 1990 used the justice of the peace and you have by separate resolution generally name that individual uh, as the uh, magistrate for the city. Okay. The, I, I the see. other thing yeah. that you need to talk about, Chuck, is uh, it just went out of my mind here. Uh, that's, that's my question, too. I'll think of it in a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Patucci. I, I agree with uh, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Wolf. I know from attending and going to the courts that the pro temp takes, and, and here's most of our court, uh, cases anyway, 
And uh, I try to separate the person elected or the person selected out of the whole equation when I look at this this uh, the process that we're we, what the, the the position we find ourselves in right now. I, I don't look at Pat Call per se. I look at how they handled the situation. And I know we talked, and I, I truly appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. But I I think. Looking back and looking on us, like Miss Miss Wolf said, if we did that, we'd be we'd be we'd be Bullery. tarred and feathered. Yeah. So, I, and we wouldn't do that. I think everyone on this council and and yourself, Mr. Mayor, hold ourselves in a higher higher esteem and higher place. And I know, no matter what, it's going to be handled in 2020. I don't want to see a fisc. Uh, a burden on our city based off what the county did to us and and I think we're also going to take take action on that in the next resolution with changing the IGA but do we set a precedence that we're not going to accept it I guess is the question I have are we are we going to look at this higher higher elected fifth body and say we're not going to take it to Sierra Vista what you did we would rather have a different a different JP like the pro tem or someone else and stand up what we believe in as a city, as a community. And so that's the hard part for me, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't want to spend $500,000, like Mr. Patuchik said Tuesday, on setting up our own court. I don't want to go through the stress of trying to set our own court system up when what we have is in place, is working, and, and it works good. So yeah. I... Uh, I encourage everyone to vote smart and, 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 well, and think about what we're doing. I just want so. to make a couple of comments here. One is we're appointing the position, not the individual, Roger. which is what, what point you made. To me, that shows our, uh, I, don't, I don't know if disgust is the right word, with our displeasure is probably a better word with the way the actions that the supervisors took or the way they took their action rather than doing it the way they did for the appointment of the new supervisor, it would be much more open, much more public, and much more, and at least the city would have had a comment, been able to make comments, if not make it be actual to vote, but we've been able to have input. Uh, so I'm a little upset with the process. The other thing we got to realize, too, is the election's coming in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. okay. So if, if in fact, uh, Mr. Call gets elected, that, that ends the problem. If he doesn't get elected, that ends the problem. Exactly. And what we're talking really about on this item and the next item, the next item, as you referenced, is a number of the things that are wrong, uh, well, well, I shouldn't say wrong, that are weak gotcha. in the current agreement, and we'll get those corrected. Uh, and that's only for one year. We're, once once we have a new super board of supervisors, we need to go back and standardize, and they, I think they've committed to this already, standardizing the agreements between the cities and the various JPs. Mm -hmm. So you have one you have one thing that's based on cost, and and uh, and and the and the, and the requirements of the, of each of the different districts. So I think that not only this agreement for the we're voting on next will help to solve some of the issues that obviously bother uh, some of the members of this council and the agreement we vote on next if, if approved will assist getting getting there and the final agreement the standardized agreement I'm sure will be in such form that it'll make it even better so that when they do make appointments they will be required you know out of cycle out of election cycle appointments they will be required to at least consult and have a public meeting with us, and that's one way we can kind of force uh, the the uh, the board of supervisors Roger. and do it transparently. So, again, that's you had some comments, Rachel. I did actually. So, um, Christine, very well said. I think you should write down your comments all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that in the sweetest way. I, I have special words for you right now. So, I'm going to write them down. <laughs> So, no, I, I think that you were point on, and, and there obviously um, the issue is the perception of what they did was unethical. The courts have told us it wasn't illegal. 
So I look at this, and I spoke a little bit about this Tuesday, and I know there's some disagreement, but I just want to explain further what I mean when I say that legislating by morality bothers me um, in some ways. Um, it's kind of like with me if a business has followed every rule, but a person personally doesn't agree with that business, they vote no, which I believe we had a former mayor that used to do that with liquor license. But um, so she abstained. She abstained. Oh, see, there you go. Okay, she abstained. So, um, but, you know, they followed the laws that are on the books, and it, it's, in my opinion, not our job to decide what's right or wrong when the law says something. I, however, understand exactly what you mean about the ethics of the issue, but I'm coming from this as it's my job as a council member to do the right thing for the city of Sierra Vista financially and fiscally first and foremost. The biggest thing we do is the budget. And so that's where I'm coming from on this. It's not that I um, approve or disapprove of the person who was appointed or the process that was followed. This is simply a financial decision for me, and I will be voting in favor of it. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it appears that several members of council have some concerns about the process that was used. I wonder, is it possible uh, in a vote like this to include additional, additional uh, comments that include the displeasure we feel with the well, process. Well, the, the way to do that is to have a separate resolution that would say what our displeasure was specifically about the appointment action and get that passed. It would kind of be a non-binding resolution by the council that we would send uh, officially to the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. And that's and that basically is where it would end. The question, the question I have is to be able to do that like all resolutions like that is is there a consensus to be able to do something like that because the only way it's going to be effective if it's a 3-2 vote or a 4-3 four, three. Four, three vote or, or a, a split vote, you know, even a 5-2 vote for, in favor doesn't send as strong as me, a strong a message as the proponents of that type of a document would want. Okay. So there's, it's dicey is what I'm telling you. So uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. You well, I was just talk. going to say, so we have really have two things on the table then. We have this and whether I want to make a motion about a resolution. So. Well, right now, the only thing that's on the table is the motion that before okay. us. If, if you want to do something else at a future time. <coughs> it wouldn't be today. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be today. Okay. Yes, I, and Gwen, with the um, the next resolution, I know I'm jumping ahead, but the new IGA, yeah, I think that makes a statement in itself. Some of the things we put in there it might help with the wanting the resolution. Okay, I, sure. I just want to add Thank that you. I um, I think that also. The two things address or voice our displeasure is the naming a position, not a, an individual, um, and then the following IGA uh, changing how business is done in the future. I think both both um, send that message for me, um, and uh, so I. While I feel like I agree with Christine on the ethical decisions, like I felt it was the process was unethical while legal um, I did feel it was unethical but I am I guess solved or uh, you know I feel that we address it in those two actions myself okay Any further comments just one more mr. mayor um, I appreciate everybody's input on this I, I think we send a message just what we said tonight Conversation. with everyone saying this is unethical um, I left Tuesday's meeting with the intention. Uh, not everybody said it was. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I have Mayor. a little different de definition, but that's okay. <laughs> with with the words, uh, I'll back up some. I I left Tuesday's meeting doing the same thing Christine did. I was voting no. Um, I asked Mr. Petucci about the the ramifications specifically to help me in that decision. Um, to to weigh is ethics worth five hundred thousand? Is ethics <coughs> worth? I don't think our ethical behavior is worth any money. It, it, it's what you have. Um, I'll be voting yes to appoint the JP for, for JP5, but not 
an individual. So, and and I'm just glad. I, I want to thank everyone for their words tonight because uh, it, it was a hard process. It's a hard thought process, and uh, I think we all discussed and said pretty much some good stuff. So I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Just to be clear, this was never about the person. Okay, the only person who mentioned the person was the person who spoke. <laughs> So I just want to be clear, that's not where I'm coming from. It's not about the person, about the process. Okay. And then um, since I've been quiet on this, because I felt like everyone who spoke on Tuesday, um, I agreed with everybody, so I didn't feel the need to speak up then. But I do feel the need to explain my vote and that um, we – we have a, we do have a moral, I, I, I believe we have a moral obligation to speak up when we don't agree with something, but being on council, we also have a moral um, duty to be fiscally responsible with the taxpayer's money, and that's the reason I'll be vote, voting yes when weighing all the um, choices, and I feel like there is assurance with the IGA, and a statement is made, and I, that is in the next resolution, but um, that does help me make this decision. Thank okay. you. Any, any further comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Did you vote? Would aye. You? Aye, okay, so what's, it ends up being two to, two to five, five to two, motion carries. Thank you very much, a good discussion. And I appreciate the fact that everybody Took, took time to think this one, this one through because it was a tough one. Okay, we now move on to item number 10. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Pacheco, please. Mrs. Pacheco. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that resolution 2019-052, an intergovernmental agreement with Cochise County to provide consolidated court services be approved. Second. It's been moved and second. Mrs. Yarborough, may we have the staff report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think you covered most of the important points, but I'll cover them one more time. <laughs> this agreement does extend our intergovernmental agreement with the county to provide municipal court services for one year. It is only for one year as we work with the county to develop a standard uh, contribution methodology that can be applied fairly and consistently to other consolidated courts within the county. And so the changes in this updated agreement are as follows. Uh, the city will pay $100,000 for court costs plus an additional <coughs> $61,000 for a part-time magistrate pro tem. The city will pay the county those amounts directly who will then pay the magistrate and the magistrate pro tem. Uh, this also, this agreement ends the additional payment that was made to the justice of the peace of $31,750, and so overall, it's a $29,250 increase to the budget only. Uh, the city would require that the presiding judge of the Superior Court appoint a magistrate pro tem who is a licensed attorney in good standing in the state, and in the event that the Board of Supervisors would ever need to appoint a justice of the peace for precinct number five again, the agreement requires the board to consult with city council on its selection, but the final decision would remain with the Board of Supervisors. With that, I'd be happy to take any additional questions. Thank you, Ms. Yarborough. Questions for Ms. Yarborough? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a question. So uh, with the requiring that the uh, person be an, an attorney, is that only for nominations? And if it was, if once we go to elections, elections is what elections? For the pro tem. We're talking the pro tem. Pro tem, oh, okay. pro tem is normally okay. an appointed okay. position or okay. a hired position. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and Mr. Mayor, just to clarify that too, because that, that's a fairly significant change in terms of these agreements. Uh, the uh, other communities, as well as Sierra Vista, had to enter into separate agreements to pay uh, the magistrate, whoever, whoever it was. And uh, I, I don't like that practice. And uh, <coughs> when we negotiated this uh, with the county, uh, Judge Conlog, who is the presiding uh, judge, uh, was uh, in on that call. And he didn't like that practice either, but it is in his purview ultimately to appoint the judge pro tems. But he was very agreeable to taking out the separate agreement and having it go through the county, and also very agreeable that uh, the pro tem would have to be a licensed attorney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, I just want to say thank you to Victoria and Chuck for listening to council and, and looking at ways to improve this process and, and extending it just for the year and just your problem solving and, and finding a way to get through this and to go forward. So thank you. Anybody else? I, I just want to make a final comment. Uh, so, so even before we went uh, uh, with an agreement, a formal agreement with the county, we've had issues with actually getting real data is what it costs to run the court. And I think this year will give the county and us an opportunity to make sure we really know what the true true court costs are. And that needs to be a priority for the next, uh, for the next agreement to make sure that we know what they are. We kind of have a feeling and we know that the state takes some of the money back and all the other stuff for fines and that kind of thing. But, uh, there has to be a, a better accounting than there has been in the past. When, I think when we started, it appeared that there was no accounting for what the county did with their time, and that was an issue too. I know I remember the previous assistant city manager pulling her hair out over this <laughs> issue uh, mm -hmm. to try to come up with a reasonable number so that we were served and we were not overcharged and the county was being served and, and they weren't uh, subsidizing our, our court efforts. So. We got to find the balance, and that's and that really I think needs to be the charge for the next agreement. Find out that balance. And Mr. Mayor, I, I believe your sister communities and the county would would like to know that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think uh, there's yeah. support there for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So any of other further discussion questions? I'll call for the question then. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item number eleven, Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that resolution 2019-053, an amendment to the city manager's employment contract, be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Fleming, will we have your staff report, please? Yes, Mayor and Council, thank you. So I have a resolution before you tonight for your consideration that is an addendum to the city manager contract. This addendum would be changing the annual pay to $171,384. There are no additional terms or conditions that are changed in this addendum, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Ms. Fleming. Any questions for Ms. Fleming? Thank you, Ms. Fleming. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Mayor well, Mueller, I just want to say uh, thank you to the council for your continued support. Uh, and we want to we want to thank you for your excellent performance and ability to manage the city Absolutely. in a in a exemplary manner. Absolutely. So we now move to uh, call to the public. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody from the public that has provided a form. If there's if uh, you want to speak, don't see anybody getting up to to move the podium. So we'll close call to the public. We next go on to comments and requests of council. And tonight we'll start with Mrs. Calhoun. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Calhoun. Mr. Benning. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Benning. Ms. Humphrey. Um, Mrs. Okay. Humphrey, I keep. Yeah, I'll answer. <laughs> no, I'll get it. Um, it doesn't matter. It's Humphrey. You got the Humphrey, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, well, that too. That's a, that's a yeah, switch. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'll accept Victoria too. You know. Um, what did I say? Oh, the commissioners. <laughs> Thank you for uh, being willing to serve and stepping up to be on the airport commission. And it's great to see again all the uh, volunteers from the police and, and employees of the year from the police department. Um, they're outstanding individuals, and I'm really thankful for all they do. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We now want move on to uh, Mrs. Pacheco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to welcome to the members of the Airport Commission as well. Great to have um, have a quorum again on the Airport Commission. Uh, we we're grateful to have that, and w we have some changes coming up and and some exciting things happen at the airport. So excited to have them on board. Um, I want to also uh, echo that we. I got to attend the police annual dinner and um, we got to hear in detail the stories of the volunteers of the year and the really amazing individuals, some amazing individuals that you have in your department and volunteering for your department. Um, so their stories were inspiring. It was a great evening to hear 
for those, you know, uh, in full length, I guess. And a last Ahua for the Army's birthday tomorrow. So got to <laughs> give that a shout out. Tomorrow's Army's birthday. And we have, we are proud home to our Army post here. Yes, so. we are. Mm-hmm. How many years are you? It's like 200 well, years. 1775 minus 219. Yeah, two. That's a lot of math. That's all the math, yeah. Okay. Hot uh, quiz. So uh, we'll now move on to uh, thank you, Ms. Pacheco. Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I First, I just want to put out that I was so excited about the festival that we put on over Memorial Day weekend. I know staff put a lot of time and effort into it, and I think it was awesome. Personally, I really enjoyed myself. I don't know what you guys did, but I did. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, I want to say um, happy Father's Day coming up. Unlike what most people think, I did not actually hatch from like a random <laughs> egg. I do have parents. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to my father for putting up with me and not killing me. It's really sweet. And <laughs> I want to we do thank him too. <laughs> congratulations to the police department awardees. <laughs> thank you guys. Be safe this weekend. Thank you, Ms. Wolf. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I believe <coughs> that your parents have moved here, correct? They did move here. Yeah. Oh, good oh, move. Okay. Yeah, so it's good. Uh, my parents, are however. Gonna, are you going to have to behave now? That's the question. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they actually enable her to misbehave. So, but, um, Grant, you know, coming back on that, I want to say thank you to my father as well because of him and my mom, I am where I am today. And the selfless service that they taught me, I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you to that. I'd also like to, I actually have a lot of positive things I'd like to say. So I would like to say thank you to our council. I'm so happy to have a council that obviously weighs very important decisions and we think in depth about them. We discuss them again. I, we've talked about this before, but discussing them in a civil manner, it's so refreshing and so great to have the ability as a group to do that. So I thank all of you for that. I also um, want to say to Mr. Petuchik that I thank you for the work that you did and I'm so happy that council was able to come to an agreement and agree to get you at a place that it's close to where you need to be in your salary to reflect our appreciation of you. Better volunteers of the year, as far as I'm concerned, what they do is so very close service to animal shelter and I'm very excited about the trailer and very excited not to have to hear Jane talk about it all the time so that we can move on <laughs> so I'm glad to get that done but that's all and so um everyone have a great weekend <laughs> yeah thank you Miss Gray did you have an alibi I just want to answer a question before you give your final thoughts 244 years today will be 244 245 years tomorrow Okay, for the Army's birthday. Though. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I just do have a couple things tonight at uh, six thirty. Uh, the Desert Swing Jazz Band will be in the park, so please come out and uh, enjoy that concert. Uh, next week on the twentieth of June, you'll have the entire Desert Swing Band out there, not just the jazz combo. Uh, we mentioned the Army's birthday. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be I'll be up and, and out at the post at 6:30 when they finish their run. The army's doing the run, and then they cut a cake and have a little ceremony. So I'll, I'll go out and represent. I was going to ask the mayor pro tem to do that, <laughs> but uh, she looked at me, gave me a funny look when I was thinking about it. So so I thought I better not better not do that. Uh, we may, we mentioned that the, the the 14th is also happens to be Flag Day, and I would remind folks if they have older flags that need to be recycled, returned, turned in. I know the VFW and a couple of veterans organizations will take those. And I know there's a ceremony tomorrow with the scouts. I don't know what time, but they will officially be retiring flags that are, are not in prime condition, shall we say. So it's, it's always important to honor our flag and honor our army as the uh, oldest uh, armed service we have. And the reason in some cases we're still around 
on uh, the 15th, which is uh, Saturday. Uh, they will be a movie in the park. It's Hotel Transylvania. Starts at dusk, so bring the kitties and the blankets and the popcorn and, and whatever else you need to do there and have a great time. With that and seeing nothing else before the council, meetings adjourned. Thank you for your, thank you staff for for being here tonight.